Hey everybody, this week's laptop is a Lenovo IdeaPad Trio 5. Um, this again was one bought with a bunch of other laptops that were described as having a motherboard fault. I have no screen, I have no keyboard, but I do have a charger because it's a generic Lenovo one and I have my HDMI plugged in. Here's my power button, so I'm going to press the power button and we'll see what happens. So I'll press the power button. Okay, we get the fan spinning up, light comes on. Okay, and let's see if we have any video. Okay, so we've nothing on screen. So it is powering on. We are getting the fan starting, the light stays on, but there is nothing on the screen. I've scanned in the motherboard and we're gonna start our troubleshooting as usual at our DC in jack, which is here. As you can see, JDC in one. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put it split screen, I'm going to have the schematic on one side and my motherboard on the other, and we're going to start troubleshooting. So as you can see in our DC input jack, there are five pins, one, two, three, four, and five. Let's mark those in. And these correspond to our five pins on the schematic here. So we've ADP in. The first two pins are joined together, and that is our positive input right here. Pins 3 and 4 are also joined together and they go to ground. And pin 5 is on its own and goes to, where is it? It's probably some sort of ID pin. Yeah, it's an ID pin. So that's what we have. And what we're looking for here is to take some measurements on our positive line. So 1 and 2 is where our positive voltage comes in. So it comes onto this PF101, which is a fuse, then onto these two inductors, and then it goes somewhere else on the board. So what I want to do first is just measure and make sure that our 20 volts from the charger is making it onto these two pins and through this and onto here. So with my multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range and with my black probe to ground, I'm going to start taking some measurements. So the first place to measure is right here at the DC input jack. We've already confirmed that pins 1 and 2 are where our input voltage comes in. So I place my probe to pin 1 here and we find that it measures 20.45. So our voltage is coming in through our charger onto our DC jack and that looks good. And as you can see from a schematic where our positive voltage comes in, the first component that is in line is PF101 which is just a fuse. And that corresponds to this component right here. So what I want to do is measure the other side of this fuse and ensure we have that same 20.45 at this point here. So again in volts DC I place my probe to the other side of the fuse right here and I measure 20.45 here also. So our fuse is good. On our schematic we can see that after PF101, which we've confirmed is okay, we then connect to PL101 and PL102 which are two inductors in parallel. Now they correspond to these two inductors here, PL101 is the top one, PL102 is the bottom one. So we need to confirm that our 20 volts is coming through these. So again in volts DC I place my probe to the other side of the inductor and we find that there is 20.45 here also. We've established that everything looks good up to this point, but the question is where does it go from here? Because it's not immediately obvious. It looks like there's vias, but I checked the other side of the board and there's no components there. But we need to know where the voltage travels after this point. Now what we see from our schematic is that after the inductors, this is labeled as V in. So I need to see where else in the schematic we have V in. Well, I found V in further down the schematic. Here it is right here. And as you can see, the next component in line is PQ301. So when I went back to my motherboard, I can see that PQ301 is this right here. So what in fact happens is our voltage comes in a one through the fuse, through the inductors, and hops from here to here. And this is our next component in line. So the first check I want to do is just confirm that our 20 volts is getting on to pins 5, 6, uh, 7 and 8 of PQ301. So once again in volts DC with my black probe on ground, we're going to take a measurement at these pins right here. So I place my probe here and I find that it measures 20.45 volts. 
So our voltage is making it through to PQ301. So PQ301, as you can see by this, is an Aeon4407, which is a P-channel MOSFET. So let's mark in the pins on that. So we have four drain pins on one side, and we have three drain, sorry, three source pins and a gate on the other side. So we want to measure voltage on our gate pin and see if this MOSFET is switched on. So I place my red probe to my gate pin right here, and I measure 8.45 volts. So that should mean our P-channel MOSFET should be switched on and we should have our 20 volts coming through from our drain to our source. And measuring at our source pins, I find that there is 20.45 volts on these pins also. Back to our schematic, we can see that after our 20.45 volts leaves the source pins of PQ301, it comes straight onto the source pins of PQ302, which is PQ302 right here. So let's mark out the source pins. We have 1, 2, and 3 are our source pins. So there's our little dot, which is indicating pin 1. So 1, 2, and 3 are our source. 4 is our gate, which is here. And then 5, 6, 7, and 8 are our drain pins. So let's mark those in. Now we've already established that we have 20.45 volts here and that comes straight along onto the source pins. So we've also got 20.45 on our source pins right here. So the question is what do we have on our gate? So checking for our gate voltage once again, I still have my black probe on our ground pin right here and I place my red probe to the gate pin of PQ302 and I find that there is 8.45 volts on the gate pin. And lastly, we just need to confirm that our 20.45 volts is making it through from our source to our drain pins. So once again, I measure on our drain pins and we find that it measures 20.45 volts right here. Back to our schematic. We have confirmed that there is 20.45 volts here on the four drain pins of PQ302. So what that means is that's our main power rail, this is our current sense resistor here, and this is our B plus voltage. So our main 20 volt power rail is working. So next I want to just verify that my 3.3 volts and my 5 volts are also present. So, so let's do that now. Schematic, it tells us that at jumper PJ401 we should be measuring plus 3 always on power. So I've found that right here, I've introduced my multimeter in volts DC. As you can see, this right here is PJ401, which corresponds to PJ401. And we're going to take a voltage measurement here. So when I take a voltage measurement here, we find that there is 3.32 volts at this point. So our 3.3 volts always on power looks good. Beside it, we have PJ402. When I check the schematic, you can see that PJ402 is where we should expect to find our 5 volts always on power. Like I said, a lot of cases with these, you know, you can find the 3.3 volts and the 5 volts always on grouped together, uh, even when they're not produced by the same IC. So we're going to take a measurement here on PJ402, and when I measure at PJ402, I find that it measures 5.012 volts. So our 5 volts always on power looks good as well. Next, I just wanted to confirm the voltage on the bias battery, which is our bias battery right here. So as you can see, I have my black probe connected to a ground here, and we're just going to take a measurement from the positive side here. So I place my probe here, and we measure that it's 3.20 volts. So the bias battery looks okay. Next, I wanted to check our bias IC just to make sure that it's getting the correct input voltage. So I place my black probe to a ground, which I'm just getting from the screw holder right here. And we can see this is a wind bond. Uh, I don't think I can see the full name. 25Q64FV. So with these, we have pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 is the pin where we should have our input voltage. So what I'm going to do is just take a voltage measurement at this point. So I place my red probe carefully to this pin and we find that it measures 3.32 volts. So our bias is also getting the correct input voltage. Now at this point in our troubleshooting we've confirmed that there are quite a few things that are working on this motherboard. 
our main 20 volt power rail is working our 3.3 volts always on is working our 5 volts always on it's working we have the correct voltage on the bias battery and the bias IC and when we press the power button it does seem to come on but it just doesn't post so it seems like our power um, our super IO and our power button are also working but at this point what I thought might be useful is I'm gonna go around to all the inductors um, I've taken measurements on each one which I'm gonna write in right now so as you can see them appearing across the board on each of the inductors and I'm gonna check those to make sure that they correspond to uh, the voltage rails that are in our schematic starting at the inductor at the top so this is PL302 and I measured 2.6 volts on this so what I'm gonna do is simply search for PL302 and PL302 is right here so what voltage should we expect on that yeah that's battery voltage so it just goes through a current sense resistor and then onto the battery so that's 2.6 volts which is correct just below that we have where is it PL802 so PL802 PL802 is this inductor right here and when we look at it that is meant to be 1.05 VSP and that is measuring 1.08 volts so that's within spec also next moving down we have the next inductor which is beside our RAM memory so that's PL502 so PL502 and as you can see yeah as you can see that that is produced by this IC here the RT8207MZQW and that rail should be measuring 1.35 volts now we're measuring 1.375 but it's close enough that it's okay across the board then we have already established that we have 3.3 volts always on and 5 volts always on but just to be comprehensive let's just verify so PL402 PL402 whoops. Uh, PL402 is this inductor right here and as you can see this is on our 3 volt always on power rail so that's fine next one is PL404 uh, PL404 and this is PL404 here on our schematic so as you can see it says LX underscore 5 volts so this is likely 5 volts yeah 5 volts always on power 5.0 volts is measuring correctly also I think there's one more inductor on this side yes this one here so we have uh, PL1102 and that corresponds to this so that is CPU core now it doesn't actually give a voltage on this it just gives us CPU core is it written out here anywhere no it just says phase it's not actually telling me what that voltage should be but I think that is correct so we've now confirmed that all of our secondary voltages seem to be online also so the question still remains why are we not getting any display I press the power button the light comes on the fan spins up the CPU starts to get warm but I don't get any display I decided to touch around the board when the laptop was on and see if anything got excessively warm and there was really nothing on the board that got warm outside the CPU which was getting a little bit warm and this inductor right here on the 1.8 volt rail PL1102 this was getting extremely warm so what I decided to do was just take some more measurements at this and see if there was anything wrong so I took these measurements at that inductor obviously we had the 1.81 volts which I've measured already but I also powered off the laptop completely and disconnected the power and in diode I measured 0 0.022 volts and in resistance mode I measured 90 ohms so there's nothing really that looks bad about that at all it was just very noticeable that this was getting extremely warm okay so you all know what I did next say a prayer and flash the bias so once again I managed to get a bias for this LA B092P revision 3 motherboard from Bad Caps. I took off the bias chip put it into my CH341A and I used the AS programmer to copy on the new bias 
and when that finished I just soldered the IC back onto my motherboard okay I'll flash the bias as you've seen so we have it plugged back in and I have the heatsink plugged in just to give it every chance here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press okay so green light and here's our screen okay so it seems like it's doing the same thing okay oh it turned blue no way oh it's come back orange again um i'm not sure what happened there it obviously triggered something on the hdmi that made the monitor think that it was going to give it an output oh blue again and nothing Oh dear, I got my hopes up there. And that's where I got to leave it for this week, guys. I don't think I can do any more with this one anyway. I think there is a problem with the onboard graphics on this. And it seems like it's trying to start up, but then it's shutting down for whatever reason. All of the main voltage rails are online. I know that the memory I'm putting in is good. The BIOS battery is good. The input section is good. It all looks good, but it just won't. Give me a display but look you're perfectly entitled as always to put comments down below if you think i can do more with this or to correct me on anything that you think i should be doing better um i always appreciate your comments because as you know i learn just as much from you guys as you learn from me i'm going to be back with something else next week i've got a couple of motherboards on the way and hopefully they're going to make for some good content for the channel so i'll be back and i'll talk to you then have a good week